Someone has told me that you've abandoned ship on castings and gone to sheet metal. Is that correct? Well, I mean, three or four of our factories um, were already mm. doing the front end in sheet metal. Yeah. Only Texas, and then for a little while, Ber Berlin built the full structural battery pack um, with the castings front and rear. And we, when we went to this vehicle, we went back to one like common body across the globe because we wanted to make sure that we had good interchangeability between each of our factories running supply chain issues. And so this has a modified version of what was in the old Model Ys with the front end and the rear end is still cast and we actually redid the whole rear casting. It's about seven kilos lighter now. It's got about half the machining on it. Wow. And uh, you know, we continue just to improve it there. So you told me the last time that uh, when I was looking at the Cybertruck, you said that um, you have a new um, CFD uh, uh, calculations yeah, and yeah. What, or let me we'll scrub the CFD. Um, you it's have still new, computational uh, fluid dynamics. Just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I know. But um, we try and I, I try not to use acronyms. So you you've got fluid dynamic uh, a program mm -hmm. that helped you uh, redesign the um, the casting on the Cybertruck with looked like. Rivers. Little rivers, yeah. yeah. And um, and it became lighter and I mean, more we're using that now here too, but it's crazy yeah. for me. I was just looking at the numbers with my team. You know, the, the original one piece casting from 2020 when we came out with this was like 67 right. yeah, yeah, kilos. Yeah. yeah. And now we're down just below 60. And it's crazy to think that yeah. we took out almost 15% of the mass and we increased the stiffness yeah. and we increased the, you know, the point mobility locally. And I mean, that all, the other thing that's impressive is our cycle time went from like 180, 170 seconds. We're down about 75 seconds now. So we can we do that through conformal cooling. Yeah, so, right, yeah. So I we actually the cooling was... In so, the dye. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, so I, I've been talking to a bunch of dye makers and whatnot, and um, 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 especially the guys at uh, Co-Stamp. And... Um, <sighs> I mean, I'm totally blown away by what can happen when you use their kind of their kind of process, the puzzle mold and whatnot. Yeah. And I was a you I, were I a dye maker you knew for a long was, time. Yeah, it was. And um, and then I transfer I just got tired of working, so I became an engineer. <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the day, um, listening to him talk about how much more they can shoot using that, I'm just wondering, is that also because of the cooling? Yeah, I mean, like, stuff? you know, we really had to upgrade on many of our DCMs, like, like sorry, our die cast machines. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thermal com units that control the cooling. Like, when we first started, you know, we had, like, four channels, you know, yeah. on this huge. And we would have, like, six or eight of them lined up, you know, to get enough cooling channels to get into the big die. Yeah. And now we have thermal controllers that can, you know, have <clears> one <throat> for the entire die. And it allows us to control, you know, within the fractions of a second, how much water is going where to cool what part of the die. Yeah. And that means we can flow the material quicker through the die, not necessarily like, uh, you know, it's still a 10 millisecond, 12 millisecond shot, but we can cool it quicker as it gets in there. And that solidification time, really getting the whole thing to cool at once is what helps us with dimensional stability and, you know, keeping it, getting it out of the mold faster. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is let that, you know, like the center of the core the, where the biscuit is just be hot and pull away heat, shrink the whole thing in. Yeah, correct. So, so like yeah. th that kind of, you know, puzzle piece, puzzle block molding technology you're talking yeah. about, like that's really yeah. important for that because then you get high wear surfaces when you have all that cooling. Right, yeah. You take out the puzzle piece, put a new one in right, yeah. for maintenance. And that we, we actually now, in order to do all this, we have a dye shop in Texas, make our own inserts and like do um, our own maintenance and all that kind well, of stuff. At the end of the day, um, it's not rocket science once you've got, if they make the mold, pulling out a section and putting yeah, another so, one so in, it's like not that big a deal. So I'm... Uh, like I've heard three to one. I've actually heard from some of the other people who bought those things as high as uh, like four, almost four, four to well, one. So that that, that just yeah. blows my mind. I guess we were at like 180. Yeah, we're like still about three to one. Three to one. Right now, now. And I, your numbers are uh, almost like public domain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's like, it's uh, like stopwatch yeah. on the show. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there's people that take pictures and um, or or sit with a pocket watch in your in the pocket. factory on yeah, the tour whatever yeah, on the tour to yeah but you're you're still at like something like 43 45 seconds oh. cycle time right well for the, the for the whole car for the whole car yeah, yeah. we're just below 43 like yeah. you know we, 
as the final line runs a little faster than the, the back end of the line because yeah. we don't want to get bottlenecked. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah. about 43 yeah. seconds. Shanghai, you know, they're they're running uh, two lines for Model Y now, and they run 13K in 140 hours. They got to be below, like closer to 35 seconds. 35 seconds is amazingly but that's, quick. You know, <clears throat> yeah. Two lines coming out, so it's like yeah, one every other. But anyway, 